Hello, let's now have a look at a few things relating to testing. Starting with the two types of test. And just to maybe step the obvious a little bit, testing is checking for possible errors so that they can be fixed. That's the purpose of testing. Users don't get very happy if the software is crashing or not responding or being slow. We want to try and avoid that. Now, in software development companies, there are two main types of testing which are employed. Iterative testing and final testing, which is also called terminal testing. And typically, a company would employ both nowadays. In the past, you may only do final testing, but iterative testing is used by all major development companies nowadays as well. So what are the differences between these two types of testing? Well, iterative testing is done during development and you are testing individual modules of the program. Well, what is a module? A module is a fancy word for just a section of code. This could be a sub-program. This could be a couple of sub-programs. This could be 50 lines, 100 lines, but it's not a massive bit of code, which when you bear in mind that a video game could be a few million lines of code, if not more, we're talking a relatively small chunk of this code at a time, written by one person or written by maybe a couple of people. And the benefit of iterative testing is it enables you to check small sections of code are working as you are progressing. It may be easier to find bugs if you are really, really thoroughly checking a small bit of code. Whereas the alternative would be to bypass this type of testing, hope it roughly works, and then at the end, you may find you've got loads more errors because you weren't as far earlier on. Now, iterative testing wouldn't be enough on its own because once you finish development, once you finish coding all of the features, it's important to test the whole program collectively because you want to see how the modules are working when they are put together. It's possible all your modules work individually, but when they're combined, there are a few more bugs to iron out. Now, for either of these two types of testing, you need to use a range of test data. Well, test data are possible values that you input to a program when you are testing it. And the range of test data is really important because we want to see if our programs are robust. We want to see how the program is going to behave under slightly unusual circumstances. There's a risk that a programmer just types in what they are hoping the user types in. That might work, but equally anything unexpected could cause some tricky errors. Now, there are four types of test data you need to be aware of, including the differences between each of these. Well, normal test data is somewhat as the name suggests. This is data you are expecting the user to type in in the future. How are you expecting the user to behave? These sort of values are inputted. They shouldn't have any issues when they run. There should be no errors at all. Whereas boundary test data is where it starts to get a little bit interesting and your program might not behave quite as it should. This is test data, which is the correct data type, but is on the edge of being either accepted or rejected. So this could be either inside the acceptable range or just outside of it, but it's right on the edge. And we test boundary specifically because often your condition might make a mistake here. You might do a greater than sign when you needed to do a greater than or equal to sign. Those are the sort of errors which could creep in at the boundary. And then invalid and erroneous are two which sound identical, so we have to differentiate them in our mind. Invalid is where it's the correct data type, but it should still be rejected by the program because it could cause errors. By rejected, we mean either the user gets a message saying this is invalid, maybe it goes into a while loop, maybe there's some validation, but what could happen is if you weren't careful, they could type in an invalid input and it could crash your program. We're trying to avoid crashes through things like validation. Crucially, the data type is the one you are expecting still. So let's say we're asking the user to enter a height. This should probably be a float. But if the user types in minus 180.5, that is a float, but it's not valid. So it, it should be rejected. It could cause an error if not validated. In contrast, erroneous is just completely wrong. It's the wrong data type. And so like, like invalid, it could cause errors if it was let through. So for the height example, if they typed in potato, that is just completely wrong, wrong data type, wrong value, could cause an error unless you were careful. So a common question and quite a nice question is to give some examples of these based on a scenario or based on some code. So here is some code which is meant to ask the user to enter their age and keep asking until it is in the range of zero to 120, inclusive. What could we type in to make sure it's correct and robust? For normal test data, we can pick something just comfortably within this safe range, 
60 or 75 or 89 or whatever, all of those are valid examples of normal test data. There are loads of possible examples. Whereas boundary, we've only got a few possible examples because we're looking at the edge of this valid range. Well, zero and 120 are allowed in this program. So we need to test whether they are working or not. We also need to test just outside of this range as well, because that might expose some minor logic errors. Then on to the ones which are definitely incorrect, but the difference is invalid has to be the correct data type. Well, here we're looking for an integer. So therefore I'm looking for an integer, which is outside of this range. Again, an infinite number of possible values here, but let's go something like 185 and minus 185 is invalid. Equally so would be positive 185 because they're both integers, but outside of this valid range. Then we have erroneous, which is just complete nonsense, completely wrong. You might type in something like hello, that would be a string, that would be the wrong data type and would be invalid according to this range. So the last thing to cover in this topic are test plans. A test plan is a list usually shown as a table of all the different tests you are going to do as a programmer. Often this gets created right at the start of development, so you know what you are aiming for at the end. And this test plan should also show what test data you are going to use, and it should cover these four types to make sure you're doing things in a thorough way. Now, the exact columns can vary a little bit. You could be asked to create a test plan or more likely complete a test plan. But the sort of typical columns are these. We need to list out what tests we are going to do, so a little description of what the tests are. We need to say what test data is going to be used, making sure we cover all four categories. We then put down the expected outcome, which is what we are hoping is going to happen when this runs. And these first few columns are what would be completed right at the start of development. The last two columns are left empty initially. Then once you finish coding, you actually go through and complete these final two columns when you are testing the program. If it turns out that some tests fail, you would then try and fix these issues and then test it again to make sure it's working the second time.